Today I am here at DC Pianos in Berkeley, California with a piano that I'd be willing to bet you have never heard of before. And you're probably looking at it and you're saying that it's a Steinway and you're going, I've heard of Steinways. But this is actually a very interesting Steinway. So th this is why I love pianos because you can have an instrument that looks normal and then you learn the tidbits about it and you go, dude, this is really cool. And like for someone who's easily amused like myself, I just love this. So for starters, this instrument is cool for a couple of reasons and I'll save the biggest one for last. It's a Hamburg Steinway O that in itself is cool here in the United States. Hamburg Steinways are pretty uncommon. It's also been fully restored by DC Pianos and their restorations are awesome. The action to the best of my knowledge is pretty much original but they have new tuning pins, new strings, and they have refinished but not replaced the soundboard so it looks like it would be pretty new although it does still have a pretty nice patina on it. Now what's the big thing? Well the big thing is this is a climatized Steinway and that's the part that you've probably never heard of before. And what on earth is a climatized piano? Well, essentially it's a piano that Steinway has reinforced to be extra durable for wet climates or rapidly changing climates or climates that you will be moving the piano to and from. Things that a normal piano would be affected by the climatized piano back in 1952 was Steinway's attempt to kind of remedy these problems. So, what effects does climate have on pianos? Well, a lot of people seem to think, which is partly true, that the temperature in between the spring and the summer, or from the summer to the fall, or even from the fall to the winter, that it's the temperature that causes pianos to go out of tune. And while it is the seasons that causes pianos to go out of tune, it's not just the temperature, it's more the humidity. As the humidity changes, wood will expand and contract. If it becomes more dry, the wood will contract. If it becomes more humid, the wood will expand. And with this happening, this can cause the tuning pins to slip ever so slightly as the pin block expands and contracts. Uh, action components may or may not change depending on the condition of the piano, and various other things in the piano can actually change depending on the humidity. So those are the things that Steinway is trying to remedy in the climatized piano. So if we take off the key slip, which fun fact on uh, Steinways, you can pretty much always, on every Steinway I've found, you can do this and it just pops right off. We can see that the key tops are a little bit unusual and we'll zoom in here real quick and check it out. But for starters, they're unusual because they're waterfall style keys. If you're familiar with Hammond organs, you'll know these type of key tops well, but they're very rare to find on pianos. But even more so than the fact that they're waterfall keys, there's interesting little bits here that I wanted to show you. So if you look at the base of these keys, at the very front of them, it's actually hidden behind the key slip normally. You can see there's two little dots, and these dots are basically like little nails or rivets that have been driven into the front of the key to prevent the top of the key, the key top, the plastic bit, and the actual key itself, the wooden part, that you can see there um, from disconnecting. So these rivets, there, there's two of them here, and then at the very bang base of the key, hopefully you can see that back in there, there is a rivet for each key top there. So each key top has three rivets in it that keep the key top being disconnected from the key itself. Moisture can sometimes do this, or at least Steinway was concerned with this happening back in 1952. So they installed these rivets into one piece key tops that would prevent the key tops from ever being disconnected from the wooden keys themselves. Very, very cool. I don't actually see any in the black keys, which is very interesting, but perhaps there are some that are hidden or painted over. On the side of the piano here, by the legs, you can see that Steinway has put four screws, which I suppose normally aren't in here, and these little screws would be helping to secure the leg together. Honestly, I'm not really sure why these are here, because you'd think the leg would be a very strong structural part. Perhaps these screws are simply to keep this decorative plate on, um, but nonetheless, they are here to help climatize the piano and prevent moisture from doing anything bad to this section of the instrument. One of the more interesting things with the climatized feature of the instrument is the pairs of screws that run along the entire rim of the instrument. I'm only showing you a relatively small section of it, but these screws run along the entire rim of the piano. And these screws are essentially here to help keep the little thin veneer on top of the rim from separating from the rest of the rim if moisture were to affect it in that way. And you can see that these screws look really, really interesting. I think it's a really neat aesthetic. Um, I believe originally there would have been paint or um, lacquer over them to hide the fact that it was actually a climatized piano. But in certain sections along the curved parts of the rim, DC Pianos has opted to leave them exposed because, well, they look cool. And there's actually another really interesting aspect of the climatization of this piano, and that's on the soundboard. Let's go look at that. 
When looking at the soundboard of this instrument, you may notice little dark blemishes, and at first glance they may look like knot holes, which wouldn't belong in a soundboard, but in fact, if you're on point with the thread here of th screws being in places that you normally don't find screws in a piano, you will immediately recognize that these are screws. So you've got one here, you've got a couple of them here, you've got three here, you've got a row of them over there, and so on and so forth. There are diagonal rows of screws, and you can hear my voice resonating in the piano too. There are diagonal rows of screws that are um, on the soundboard, and there's actually a method to this madness. These screws are here to help secure the ribs, which are underneath. They're a structural component of the soundboard. Those are there to help secure the ribs from the, to the soundboard to prevent them from separating if moisture were to adversely affect the soundboard. Um, this is actually an interesting technique that has been done for many years. Um, pianos, especially C. Becksteins, it seems, from the very early 1900s, late 1800s, will commonly have screws in the soundboard. And I'm not exactly sure why some piano manufacturers at that time use screws and others simply use glue like they commonly do today. I wouldn't be surprised if here they're using both glue and these screws to really help secure the ribs to the soundboard. But nonetheless, this is one more safety measure Steinway has taken in this instrument to prevent the um, moisture in the climate to adversely affect the soundboard of the piano. Now that we've checked out all of the climatized bits and pieces of this instrument, it's now time to take a listen to how it sounds and how it plays, which are you surprised? It's a Hamburg Steinway that's been restored at DC Pianos. Of course it's going to be good. So we are first going to play some music on it. I'm going to play the Cavatine by Edward Schutt, and then I will basically tell you what it's like to play this beautiful piano. <laughs> So the tone of this piano is really, really well balanced. You have the rich, deep, lovely sounding bass and the bright, sparkly treble up here that easily competes with it, sings out above, and just sounds really, really great.
like that sounds really 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 lovely i'm i'm a sucker for a bright sparkly resonant treble and this piano has that a lot it's beautiful And then the bass is awesome like that too. So let's play a little bit of Scarlatti here and test out the sound of the piano even more and test what it sounds like with some Baroque era music. That was Scarlatti's Sonata K1 in D minor. Let's play K380 in E major. I love playing that piece and I also love playing this piano. Something I haven't talked about much yet is the action. What's the action feel like? It feels great. You might not expect that it would for being an all original action, but I'm sure that DC Pianos has gone through it and regulated it. It certainly feels like it has because it feels wonderful. The action is a little bit on the heavier side. It's a bit heavier than you might find in a new Steinway. And I f it feels like the action has a little bit of a shallower key dip than you might find in a modern Steinway, but it still feels really, really lovely. Playing it is a breeze. It's really, really lovely. And the piano is beautifully expressionistic and it feels really lovely to play. Um, 
Um, this piano is a beautiful playing experience. Not only does it look great, but it sounds great, and it also has the interesting story of being climatized. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video of a pretty rare Steinway, actually. It doesn't look like it. It looks totally normal, but actually it's a pretty unusual instrument from 1952, and it's been beautifully fully restored by DC pianos. I really hope that you all have enjoyed this video of the Steinway on Sons climatized Model O from Hamburg too. So it's like a, a doubly extra interesting instrument. You've got the Hamburg Steinway O part, which is pretty rare, and then you've got the climatized thing on top of that. So it's a really rare piano that doesn't look like it's all that rare. It's awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos from DC pianos of both digital and acoustic pianos, much like this one here, but not quite as rare, and all kinds of other cool stuff too. There actually have been a few rare pianos at DC pianos, so you might want to go check some of those videos out. And if you enjoyed them, Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.